Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live. It is Saturday, May 12th. Our special guest today is Michael Fricano II. His topic is AR, VR, and Google Expeditions. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Michael and ask him the newbie question. Well, hello and welcome to all of you. We're so excited to have Michael Fercano back on Classroom 2 Live as our special guest presenter today. Michael has been doing amazing things with students and teachers in lots of areas, but in particular to help them enhance learning with augmented reality, virtual reality, and Google Expeditions. So we can't wait to have him share with us today. I first met Michael when I discovered his Google Live Hangouts on Air that he co-hosted with a few other Hawaiian educators that he called EdTech Mixed Plate. I actually put a link to that in our uh, live binder today because it was so awesome. They shared all kinds of EdTech related resources, tips, tricks, and lesson ideas, and ideas for growing your PLN, and I was always so excited after I participated that I'm really glad they have archived all of their recordings and show notes, even though they aren't hosting these anymore. So now he hosts his own professional learning blog called EdTech Notation, where he shares his own EdTech tips, tricks, resources, reviews, and opinions. And now I follow him everywhere, and you will too. He's a tech integration specialist for the Education Innovation Lab and a makerspace educator at Aolani School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Before that, he was a fourth and fifth grade teacher and a tech coordinator from 2010 to 2014. Um, he helped transition a public elementary school to become a Google Apps for Education school, which is very exciting. And he and it included providing Google Apps training for teachers and students. So he became the Google Apps super administrator. He's also the director of social media and community engagement and teacher architect for the Janus group. And he's going to be sharing that with us today. Um, he's co-founder and committee member for EdCamp Honolulu, a very busy guy, and he currently serves as the president for HSTE, which is the ISTE affiliate in Hawaii. Obviously, he has a passion for education, technology, maker ed, coding, AR, VR, reading, nature, video games, the internet, and TV even. So I want to say welcome to Michael. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And we would love to have you answer our newbie question and then just take over with the slides and your presentation. And our newbie question for you is, what is the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality? Wow, they, <laughs> thanks for that great introduction, Peggy. It makes me sound... Uh, a lot busier than uh, I normally feel. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I definitely get around, and uh, it's my passion to uh, do the things that I, I do in my personal, my professional life. But um, great question. What is the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality? And um, I'm going to answer this question um, with uh, two very simple um, answers, and then I, I can explain further. But um, Recently, um, Google had their their big I/O uh, developer conference just earlier this week, and uh, one of their sessions they actually um, uh, explained this difference. I thought in probably the the simplest and most elegant way. And um, so the first is uh, what is virtual reality? And the way um, the guy on the stage uh, explained it is that virtual reality uh, takes you anywhere. It has the potential, the ability to um, transport you and your students 
uh, pretty much anywhere um, in the world that you would like for them to go. And even beyond that, you can trans you can take your students into space, you can take your students into the human body, um, you can even take them into the past. But um, uh, to explain that a, a little further, virtual reality takes you out or away from your real world and transports you somewhere, uh, uh, transports you into a virtual um, our world instead. So um, typically that involves the use of a virtual reality headset and some type of device um, with a, um, a large screen that allows you to uh, you know, view that uh, virtual reality experience. But uh, in, in the experience, you, you usually cannot see the real world in front of you, which makes it the most immersive. But uh, augmented reality, um, where virtual reality takes you anywhere, augmented reality uh, brings you anything. Um, and uh, augmented reality, um, the major difference is that you, you're you still uh, present in the real world around you. Um, you, you. You can still see what's uh, physically around you in your space, whether it's your classroom or, or your home. And uh, the apps um, uh, that, that we'll explore today, they um, augment or add digital content to the real space around you, whether that's... Um, a 3D object of a statue or a person um, or a landscape or um, even using uh, physical objects and um, uh, turning them into something you know amazing and beautiful um, but uh, virtual and uh, digital. So uh, usually the way that works is your, your device uses your camera to see what's in front of you and then the your device will insert uh, some type of digital object um, through your camera into your, your real space and then you're able to physically interact and engage with it. But uh, again, I, I thought it was kind of a brilliant and simple way to describe the difference and to kind of go back. Virtual reality takes you anywhere and uh, augmented reality brings you anything, sort of brings the content to you in your real space. Let me know if that uh, didn't quite explain it, but I mean, if you're not familiar with AR and VR, um, when we get through some of the apps that I'm going to share with you today, it'll, this will definitely um, make more sense when we get to uh, some of the app examples that I'll show you. And uh, with uh, the a little less than an, an hour that we have, I am barely scratching the surface. I'm certainly not showing you everything that's out there. I would say I'm showing you point zero zero one percent of the VR and AR content that exists out there in the the wild west of AR and VR um, but uh, um, what I would like to show show with you today is uh, some of my favorite apps that I like to use in the classrooms uh, and with the teachers and students that I work with at my schools um, so uh, we'll, we'll dive into VR first and um, this, uh, so, um, so what I've done for you today is I've actually pulled some of my favorite slides from the presentations that, that um, I uh, give at various workshops and conferences throughout the year on both um, AR and VR. Um, and this particular slide deck I called uh, Jump on the Virtual Reality Tour Bus with Cool Cardboard. And um, it's sort of like a, an introductory uh, foray into, into uh, a virtual reality and um, the the uh, um, apps and um, you know, tools that you would need to introduce this into your classroom. And um, you can actually access the, the full slide deck there on the, the left. It's the bit.ly slash Torbus VR. That'll take you to my resource page. Um, typically, when I give presentations, all of my, my presentation content is available for free on my website. It's there. It, I tell people it'll be up there as long as the internet lives which is hopefully forever, so uh, it should be there for you to access uh, during the presentation or, or after, so feel free to visit it and bookmark it. Um, and uh, if you're able to access the slide deck, I actually have um, links throughout uh, that will take you to some very um, amazing and active Facebook um, education groups related to augmented and virtual reality as well as um, some more um, focused uh, Facebook groups, but um, they're um, some of my favorite Facebook groups. Um, most of them I've, I've created myself as I dive into 
different tools and uh, different apps and experiences and and um, there's lots of amazing educators in these groups. So if you're on Facebook and you're comfortable joining a group and participating in the conversation or maybe you just like to you know kind of lurk and explore what, what other people are saying and doing, it's perfectly fine. So feel free to check out those those Facebook education groups as we move through the slide deck to, uh, today. But let's take a look at two of my favorite VR apps. And if you have uh, your own mobile device uh, sitting next to you, which most of you probably do, you uh, feel free to look these up in the App Store. Um, these two apps you see here are, are available for both Android devices and iOS devices, and they work on phones as well as tablets. Um, iPad or Android tablets, um, and they're for the most part really small um, download uh, um, app downloads for your device, so it shouldn't take but a, maybe a minute to install these on your own devices. And then as I as I talk and share, you can you um, feel free to explore on your own device as well. But uh, the first one I want to share with you today is um, an app called Discovery VR. It was, it was actually one of the first apps I discovered. Um, related to virtual reality, and uh, sort of what got me hooked on a VR uh, at the very beginning. Um, this is, uh, of course, Discovery Channel's uh, virtual reality app, and um, uh, this may be surprising um, to most of you, but Discovery has been producing 360-degree uh, virtual reality content for um, a number of years now, and uh, uh, there's lots of content in this app um, related to the Discovery Channel and the shows that they, that, that they produce, like Shark Week, and um, uh, shoot, I'm drawing a blank. So there was a show with, with two guys that would try to, to uh, debunk myths. I'm totally drawing a blank, and I can't remember. If you remember, put it in the chat. But uh, that that show, they, they created a lot of three. Yeah, Mythbusters. There it is. Thank you, um, uh, Mythbusters. So there's lots of great content, 360 VR content related to Mythbusters. But then they produced a lot of really great. Uh, documentary films in um, uh, 360 degree as well, and uh, you see there in the in the slide there that Discovery VR. One thing I really love about their content is that um, uh, they, they have it available um, on a uh, wide array of devices. So I, I mentioned earlier Android and iOS, but all of their their content, all of their VR content, is also available via a website. So for you um, uh, teachers that have Chromebooks in the classroom or laptops or maybe you run a computer lab with desktop computers, um, students can watch these uh, uh, VR videos um, uh, through a web browser on a computer as well. So it makes it um, really widely accessible um, if, you, uh, you know, if you don't have access to a, a VR kit or devices in your school. Um, I'm going to switch over to my mobile device screen here. So you can see my phone. Okay, let me know. Uh, this should be working, but let me know if you uh, can see my uh, phone screen in uh, um, our session right now. We're seeing it great, Michael. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Peggy. So uh, Discovery VR, you see it at, on the top of my app list here. And I'm going to tap into it. And uh, Discovery uh, VR, they're always adding new content, which is great. That's what I, I love about um, these apps that I'm sharing is that they're always um, adding new content and updating and refreshing things. So um, there's always some great new stuff uh, to explore here. So this is Discovery VR. They've got some, um, some channels or collections across the top. Um, you see science and innovation there, nature and wildlife, a motor, excuse me, lifestyle, travel. Um, our world, and then uh, and as I'm scrolling up, this is just a, um, a collection of all of their 360 virtual reality videos. Um, some of my favorites are in this collection here, Racing Extinction. So it's uh, 360 video documentaries focusing on um, uh, you know the um, our the, the issues related to um, uh, species that are facing extinction that are. That um, are being threatened with extinction, and you know, of course, they, they go into the reasons why and, and what's happening with that 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 species, and how we can uh, try to you know, uh, bring them back. Um, there's a discovery at sea. Um, 
lots of great videos, um, lots of great uh, lots of great content related to, to current events, of course. Uh, let's see if I can find a good one. Gonna, of course, there's uh, lots of shark videos because Discovery is known for their their famous uh, Shark Week content, and they produce a lot of 360 video around that. I'll go into racing extinction. So this is a collection here, you see. So rhinos on the move from fishing to ecotourism, which is great. Uh, uh, lion whispers are really fun when you get to, um, up close and personal with um, a pretty large lion. Maybe you can watch that one. There we go. So what you'll notice here, and this is another thing I love about Discovery VR is uh, there's an option here to download these videos. And um, that's that the, um, I actually uh, prefer to do that on the devices that we use at school. Um, that way, you know, if you imagine you know, your whole classroom, um, each individually watching a 360 video on their device and using the internet to watch that 360 video. 360 videos are much larger videos and um, require more network bandwidth to watch. Um, so having 20, 30 kids all watching the same video on their own device is a network killer. <laughs> it will definitely bring down your, your school's internet. So what I typically do is um, download these videos ahead of time. What that does is it brings the video down onto your device and stores it on your device, and then it doesn't require the use of the internet to be able to play it. And um, another great reason why you would do that is because having it on your device means that you're not having to sit there waiting for the video to load. And, you know, if you've ever watched a YouTube video, it may pause because it has to load the next chunk of information. Um, so you, you know, sometimes you get those lag issues. But if you download it, you uh, won't uh, have to deal with any of that because the video is on your device and it makes it easier to watch and access. So um, you can download the videos ahead of time um, in order to prevent all that. I did not do that. Um, but here's, here's the Lion Whisperer. And uh, I can move this out of the way here. At the very bottom, when you load up a video, you have an option to watch it in two different modes. Um, the default is what's called cardboard mode, or um, also known as 3D mode, where you would have it inside of a headset. And that's uh, the, the most immersive, most engaging experience. Um, but next to that is uh, mobile mode, which is also referred to as 2D mode. Um, and uh, let me see, pull up my camera. So that's me there. So here's a couple of uh, headsets. So this is um, the initial cardboard version um, that you might, some of you might be familiar with. And uh, that's where you would put the phone inside. One of my favorites is uh, the Merge VR goggles here. So these are both the same thing. Um, one's just made out of cardboard, and one's made out of a, an amazing squishy foam material. And you would slide your phone inside that headset, and then you would put this up to your, your face. This one has a strap that you can put over your head, so you don't have to hold it. Um, but just two, two examples of uh, um, uh, virtual reality headsets that you um, might consider looking into purchasing or accessing your school, or maybe some of you actually have some already. But uh, the cardboard mode is where you would use one of those headsets. And um, the mobile mode is where you would just you would just hold the phone out in front of you and um, watch the video and then move in the direction that you, you want to uh, um, look. Oops. So I was just like, checking out the chat there. Are, are we having issues with uh, with my? Uh, um, no, screen? your screen sharing is great, Michael. The only oh, issue okay. is you can't really show videos in, in screen sharing because it keeps trying to reformulate the image. But if you pause oh, on something, funny. yeah, it, it just keeps rolling, sort of. But if you pause okay. on something just a little bit longer, then we'll get a chance to really look at it. Okay, good, good tip. So I'll try not to move, move too quickly. Yeah, yeah. I okay, keep, thanks. What I'll do is I will snap a picture, boom, and then how's that? So those are, those are the headsets I was talking about earlier. She's cardboard on the bottom right there. And it's the top purple one, that's a Merge uh, VR headset. It's one of my, my favorites. It's actually made out of a really soft, cushiony foam, so perfect for kids of all ages. 
because uh, when you have a um, a device inside of it, you want to be able to protect it as best you can. And um, the, the the purple headset, the Merge VR, does a really great job of that because it's a really um, thick but squishy foam that, that does a great job of protecting. But the, the, so these are the headsets that you would use for for cardboard mode. And I'll show you cardboard mode here. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna go. There we go. So you see it. Uh, so this is what cardboard mode looks like. Try not to move it too quickly. But in cardboard mode or in 3D mode, it splits the screen. And when you have this in a headset, these uh, these VR headsets have these focal lenses inside of it, and um, by splitting the screen, there's a line. Um, it uh, your eyes play a little trick on you. It's called stereoscopic vision. And when your eyes are inside the headset, they will merge these two images together to create um, a um, a three D aspect of the video. And when you're inside the headset too, you're you're cutting off your peripheral vision, so you can't see the real world. So it gives you a way more immersive experience. It gives you that feeling as if you're really standing there next to these lions, um, a part of this, and and you're a part of this this this, this video. A really unique experience. But not only is it 3D, but it's 360 degrees. So as in, I'm physically moving my phone around me, and it allows me to look in different directions in this video. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast for you to see what's going on. We're just in a field here. But we're in a field next to um, a pack of lions here. Um, probably a lot of, oh, there he comes. Probably a lot closer than uh, our students will ever get in their, their real life to a, a pack of lions. So it creates a really unique first-person perspective. And uh, so this is 3D mode. So you, want, you would want to view this in a, in a headset. But uh, you know, I, when I introduce this to students in classrooms, um, always start with the disclaimer that you know, 3D VR is not, um, it's not always a positive experience for everybody. You know, students, even adults with um, um, seasick or that are prone to seasickness or may have a history of concussions um, or um, uh, may you know, have issues with, with, with vertigo. Um, being in a headset like this is, not, is certainly not the best experience for them. It could cause um, some eye strain or headaches um, and uh, cause them to feel dizzy. And so for those types of people, if that's, if that's um, what happens to you in a VR experience, um, then the, the 2D mobile version is the best option for you. Um, because uh, in, in the, the 2D mobile version, you, um, you wouldn't put in a headset, but you would just hold the device uh, about you know, one or two feet out in front of you with two hands, and then you, know, you can physically move the device around. And this, uh, this 2D mode typically gets rid of all of those um, uh, negative uh, experiences that might be that might happen to some in a virtual uh, reality experience. Um, so that's why there is both the cardboard mode and the mobile mode because it's 3D versus 2D, um, and uh, just depending on the content and the student, um, you know, let them choose which uh, which mode works best for them. Um, usually, in a class of 20 or 30, I there's typically maybe two or three students that just don't do so well in, in 3D mode, and so they have that option of uh, switching it over to uh, the uh, uh, mobile version. Um, that's just a quick um, example of how these 360 videos work. And videos are, are amazing, right, because it, it's, everything's moving, there's dialogue or there's narration. Um, and uh, in, that, in that example, I mean, you're literally standing two, three feet, well, not literally, but virtually standing two or three feet away from a pack of lions, which is, just makes for a really amazing experience. And if you do this for the first time, actually not even the first time, I've done this with the same class maybe three or four times, and every single time there's always one or two students that just, they, 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 as they're in the experience, they, they're, they're using their arms and they're reaching out in front of them because they just feel so immersed and um, it gives them that, that feeling as if they're really there, that they, they, feel, they feel so much a part of the experience that they, they think they can actually reach out and grab 
things and, and touch things or try to pet that lion. Um, it's, it's kind of funny to watch, but it just shows uh, that it's just a great demonstration of the, the power that VR can have on learning in the classroom. Um, so discovery is, is one of my, my favorites. It's one of my go-to for some amazing um, current event type content and um, content related to science and nature. And uh, you know, just um, to be able to see what's happening um, around the world. Uh, let me switch back real quick. Oh, go back to here. Okay. So, uh, so Discovery VR that's one of my my all-time favorites. One of my go-to. I've got two suggestions there for some really fun uh, uh, recommended videos. One is uh, Get Ready for the Drop, which is uh, just a great um, uh, roller coaster experience. Um, probably not too educational, but it's uh, just a, a great way to get um, your classroom familiar with VR, a, a VR experience. You're like sitting in the front row of a, of a, uh, of a roller coaster ride in a 360 uh, virtual reality environment. It's a pretty uh, a thrilling experience. Um, and then uh, another one, sort of what I, it's, it's part of the Racing Extinctions, Extinction series, is the Saving Threatened Species, which is a, a really great documentary. And uh, most of these videos are, they range from, you know, two, three minutes, upwards of five or six minutes um, on average. So they're, they're really short videos, um, which is great because, uh, you know, the, the recommendation is um, to uh, really keep, keep kids in an experience no longer than five minutes um, just because of, um, you know, the fact that they're, they're holding a screen three inches from their eyes and it could, it could cause eye strain and you know, just about anybody. And it can, it can sort of get uncomfortable after long periods of time. And, uh, you know, just like, just like we as teachers um, do in class, you want to give them some um, engaging material or content um, for just a little while, and then you want to pull them back together to have those important conversations and discussions. So, you know, uh, uh, utilizing a three to five minute VR experience is um, a great fit for that. Um, another app. Uh, one of my all-time favorites is Google Street View. Um, uh, sorry, I was just making the chat there. Um, so Street View. Street View has been around for a long time as well. You may be familiar with Google Street View if you've ever used uh, Google Earth or Google Maps on the web or on your phone. You know, typically when you're searching for directions for a place in Google Maps, um, it'll provide you a Street View um, of that location. You know, and Street View is, was that idea that, um, you know, if you wanted to look for a building or a house or directions to some place, a restaurant, Street View would literally, would, you know, virtually drop you down on the street and um, it uses 360 pictures um, so that you can see what that, that location looks like and what's surrounding it, what kind of landmarks are around it. And then you'd be able to, you know, move forward and backward on the street. And, uh, um, over the, the years, Street View went from not just streets, but it moved into, uh, you know, hikes along amazing trails in the mountains and forests, and it even traveled um, uh, um, underwater. So there's um, underwater Google Street Views and some of the most amazing coral reefs around the world. Um, and now even into space, there's a great, some great Street View content on the International Space Station as well, which I'll show you when we get into it. But Street View is um, also a great app. It's available for Android and iOS as well. And um, the Street View content that you find in the mobile app that I'm going to show you, it's all the same stuff that you can still find in Google Maps and in Google Earth. It's all the same Street View content. Uh, you're just able to access it all across several different Google apps. Um, so let's take a look at Google Earth. I mean, sorry, Google Street View. Switch back over. I use Street View to find out what a business or house to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Street View is great for that, Susie. I think uh, probably one of the first places we typically look for in Street View is our house. What does our house look like in Street View? Um, or our, our school or our, our community. One of the, the first to go to searches that we typically do um, in Street View. So I'm going to jump over. Okay, so Street View is uh, the top left app here. That's the Street View icon. This is, this is another, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but the apps I'm showing you today, they're all completely free, uh, which is also pretty amazing. Most of the content 
um, especially educational content in AR and VR, um, um, are for the most part free, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, we all we all love free as teachers, right? Um, so Street View is certainly free. It's a Google app experience. Here we go. So this is Street View, and this may look familiar. So you're presented with what looks like Google Earth. So it's um, a map of the Earth, and all of these red dots that you see represent 360 degree picture content. So whereas Discovery VR was uh, 360 video, uh, Google Street View um, is made up of 360 pictures. Okay? And all these red dots represent those 360 pictures um, around the world. As they move, you'll see these red dots or these clusters of red dots in certain places around the world. And uh, maybe I'll take you to Hawaii today. Okay? But if you do a, if you're in the app yourself testing this out, if you do a reverse pinch, you can move in on the map. And as I move in, um, those red dots will break up into uh, uh, larger clusters as we get closer and closer um, to that area. So I'm zooming in on, this is the island of Hawaii, or the Big Island. You may, have, you may be familiar with it in the news because there's some active volcanic activity um, around this area near Pahoa and uh, here's where the volcano is up here. So this area is where all that active volcanic activity is, uh, is occurring and it's happening. Over here you can actually see some, uh, some old lava flows, uh, that big dark spot there, some old, old uh, uh, lava flows from a while back. Um, this is where all that's happening. And then so you'll see like all these red dots um, surrounding um, the Big Island in, in, in the middle of the island here. Um, and you can tap into, you can tap on a dot. So if I'll go, let's go over here. Oops, tap in, there we go. And as you tap, if you tap on these dots, it'll bring you closer to, to refocus the map for you and then break those clusters up even further. And then down below, I can swipe up and I can see a list of all those 360 images that are within the area of the, the map that I'm viewing. Okay, and so these are all 360 pictures. You see lots of these are, lots, of course, um, the Big Island has uh, you know, you know, our main um, street, our main you know uh, state revenue is is tourism. So we get a lot of our our money from. So we have lots of tourists and you know coming and taking pictures and creating this content for us. You'll see uh, if you just scroll through, look for a picture that you think is interesting, and when you tap on it. It'll load up that image. These are beautiful. Uh, this is a sunset. And this is a 360 picture. So right now I'm using my finger to move myself around in this 360 um, image. But if you look, if you're, in a, if you're exploring a picture yourself right now, if you look in the top right corner, there's a, um, a, a little icon that looks like a compass. And right next to that is um, an icon that looks like a, uh, that's what I like to call the universal cardboard icon. So you typically see that, that little goggle icon in all the VR apps um, that uh, you, you find. And what that does, so the, the, the compass, I'll tap the compass first. The compass activates 2D mode, which uh, allows you to now physically move your device around you, just like I did in Discovery VR. Actually, I can go sideways with this. I'm going to rotate this to get a nice wider view. <laughs> I was just jumping in the chat and I saw um, Carolyn say that is probably the closest I will ever get to Hawaii. <laughs> yes, this might actually, I and mean, this is, this is, these kinds of experiences probably get me closer to some places in Hawaii than I, than I ever will, and I, I actually live here. But here we are on an old um, lava field. Uh, right on the edge, on the, the, the water's edge there, viewing the sunset. And again, so this is 2D mode. So this is where you would hold the device out in front of you. You wouldn't use a headset for this. But if you do want a much more immersive experience, and you want to get that feeling as if you're really standing there, you could switch it over to cardboard mode using that little goggle icon up there. And that takes you into that split screen mode. There it is. And then you could slide this into one of your, your VR headsets, and it gives you that first-person perspective again, as if you are 
really standing standing there. And this is again, this is a, a 360 picture, right? So I, I I like to describe it as like a like a frozen moment in time, right? You can't and you can't in this example you can't move in any direction. You're sort of you're sort of just stuck where you're at, right? But you can uh, you can certainly look around and 360 degrees. And then uh, you just tap the back arrow to exit out, and then you can tap back again to exit back to the map or your your list of uh, pictures here. There are some examples where you can actually move um, in certain directions, and um, essentially you could take a, like a virtual walking tour um, within the area that you're focusing on. Let's see if maybe there's one here. So let's zoom in. Yeah, here we go. So here, so you see as I'm scrolling up, some of these pictures are labeled Google Street View because these are pictures that were taken by the Google Street View team themselves. When they, you know, they've traveled all over the world um, to um, all different countries and they have their special cars with giant cameras on them or they have backpacks with cameras on them. Um, lots of different modes of transportation they use to capture these 360 images. And so they create their own content. And typically, the Google Street View content allows you to actually virtually move along their path. Right? So, uh, let's see, can I do this? Oh, this way. Oh, this one doesn't let me move. Shucks. Oh, no, there we go. And actually, so what I'm doing is I'm using my finger and I'm swiping down to move in that in that direction. Or I can turn around and then I can move um, in the other direction. This one is actually a, a street. But uh, there's some great street view content um, in lots of different remote parts of the world where you can, you know, actually take your students on a virtual uh, walking tour of that location, like Machu Picchu or um, uh, lots of different coral reefs around the world. It's pretty amazing stuff. Um, let me take you back out and show you some of my favorite content. I'm going to zoom all the way out on the map. And then if you look across the top of the uh, the app here, you can actually swipe this menu from left to right. Um, but on the left side, there's a featured section. And these are, um, the featured section is always changing. Um, and they're, they're collections focused on uh, different places around the world, different famous popular places. Um, that might be connected to upcoming holidays or events. Um, uh, in some cases, uh, like there was, a, I don't know if you had, there are any Game of Thrones fans out there, but there was a collection of um, uh, Game of Thrones uh, filming locations, if you're interested in that. Here's one on Disney parks and resorts and uh, New Zealand attractions. Um, this, uh, let's say this correctly, Gangwondo highlights. This was the... Uh, um, the Winter Olympics uh, back in February. So they had locations, um, 360 content around the uh, the different Winter Olympic facilities. Um, I'm trying to find the International Space Station. So I'm going to scroll through this kind of quickly here. So, there we go. So here's the International Space Station. So I was talking about earlier where you could, you know, virtual reality transport students anywhere in the world, not just the world. You can actually transport them to um, into into space, into outer space. In this case, the International Space Station. So I tap on that. It's going to transport. This is actually a, it starts you off at the uh, the space vehicle mock-up facility for NASA. And then if you swipe up, there's actually some really high quality, high definition um, 360 images inside the International Space Station here. Here, look at these spacesuits. So we're going to jump into the joint airlock and check this out this is amazing so this is inside the international space station okay. and if you see these you see the arrows down there on the on the floor tapping on those arrows will move me in that direction so we can now virtually move around the entire ISS um, in virtual reality and of course you could uh, pop this in a headset and then um, virtually, uh, you know, uh, explore the ISS as well. So not just uh, around the world. You can take them into to outer space as well. It's a really, really cool experience. Now, 
um, I won't get too much into this last bit of information about Street View, but the reason back up there, the reason there's so much content is literally tens, if not hundreds of thousands of 360 images, um, thousands of them constantly being added every single day. And the reason for that is because it's not just Google Street View, the team that's creating this content, but it's people like you and me. It's photographers, um, people traveling for vacation, people that live in these, these popular areas. They're creating these pictures for us to access. So you see some of these are Street View. Some of these have people's names next to them. And the reason that um, these people are able to uh, um, create this content is um, two reasons. They're either um, using special 360 cameras um, or they're using the device that's in their hands. If you're in Street View right now on your mobile phone like I am, you, the, the device you're holding in your hand can actually be a 360 camera. And that's through the use of that little orange um, camera icon down there in the corner. So the Street View has a built-in 360 camera for you to create these pictures, and then you can choose to upload them to uh, the world map for everyone else to access. And that's why there's so much user-generated content. I'll just quickly show you how this works. But then when you tap that button, you get the camera option. And this, this might get a little blurry, but the way this works is you line up your the circle with the orange dot. And uh, essentially what you're doing is you're taking a series of about thir uh, 20 or 30 regular pictures um, that will overlay on this invisible sphere that surrounds you. And then when you're done taking all those pictures, the app will stitch them all together and um, clean up all of the edges and the seams and turn it into um, what seems like um, a, a really clean 360 image. So I've got some examples here. Uh, find a really good one here. So this is at a famous beach in Hawaii called Bellows Beach. So this I took with my phone using the built-in 360 camera app. And you can tell, you can see how, you know, this was made up of tw 20 or 30 regular pictures, but it, it um, uh, you know, it brings all those images together and cleans them up and stitches them together to look like um, one clean 360 picture. You see a little bit of errors there on the, on the water. But this is a, this is an example of a 360 picture taken with my, just, just my phone, just the device that I carry with me every single day. So that's the, the power of Street View, not just to consume content, um, but I love Street View because it allows our students um, to create content. And I've, I've done lots of projects where students have used their devices to create 360 pictures. And you'll see some of those examples in just a minute. I know I'm like short on time here, so I'm going to exit out of my, uh, my screen and we'll move on to the next um, slider. So that's Google Street View. That's one of my, you know, if a teacher wants to take students somewhere virtually, if they're related to history or current events or different places around the world, Street View is my go-to because um, I'm about 99.5% sure that I can take their students there virtually with, with Street View content first. Oh, sorry. Switch over. Okay, so those are two, a couple of my, my favorite, uh, two of my favorite VR apps. And then uh, two more here. Uh, these, these two are very similar to Discovery VR, but these are um, VR apps related to news and, and documentaries. So the first one, NYT, that's the New York Times VR app. They've got lots of amazing content. Um, I, I won't uh, uh, demo it, but it's very similar to the way Discovery VR works. So these are 360 videos, um, but these are these are created by news organizations and news companies that are, you know, they produce other types of news related content, stories and and videos and things like that, but they're also producing in 360 now. And we're seeing that more and more as um, uh, the field of news picks up on this, this new technology. We're creating some amazing 360 VR content. So the first one is the New York Times VR. And uh, the second one, it's called Within. And uh, they're also producing VR news stories and documentaries. Um, they're also producing some content on the entertainment side, like uh, movie trailers and, and things, and just some, some fun videos related to music and different, you know, all kinds of different forms of entertainment. 
Um, Within is one of those that has all their content on the web as well. So you could access it via a laptop or a desktop computer, as well as their, their mobile app for Android and iOS. But uh, check those two out as well. Those have some really great um, 360 uh, VR content too. Let's move on. Okay, so I wanted to just dabble a little bit. Uh, so, you know, what I showed you um, first was um, some great consumption, some great content for consumption, right? So what's out there right now that we can use in our classrooms to supplement all the other great material and resources that we're already using. Um, so those are some great tools or some great apps that, uh, um, you know, can transport your students anywhere and it's great for consumption. But what, I'm, what I've been really interested in um, the past year or so is how can we get our students to create this content? And so I just wanted to dabble a little bit into some of my favorite creation tools for VR. And um, one of my, my top favorites is the ThingLink VR editor. I don't know if some of you are, are familiar with the ThingLink tool in general, they've been around for a while. It's like a, a photo editing, um, a, a, like a web, a web-based uh, photo editing tool that allows you to create interactive images. So imagine like a picture, and then you can overlay with these what they call tags or buttons that um, allow you to embed like YouTube videos and Google Forms and links out to other websites. So this interactive image experience, but they. They can they uh, take took, took that same concept and applied it to 360 pictures as well. So you can create this interactive virtual reality experience. So you're not just sort of sitting frozen and stationary and you know, frozen in time, and you're just looking at or watching the content, but you can interact with it as well and access all different types of materials. Um, I've got some I've got three examples here from uh, that we created for. At, at my school, one is a Pearl Harbor Memorial experience. Um, another is a, um, a VR tour of our, our rooftop garden uh, in, at, at the school that I work at, at, at Yolani School. And the last one is called the Hikiana Lea 360 experience. The Hikiana Lea is the sister canoe to um, uh, for the, uh, the the voyaging society. And you, you may have seen in the news over the past couple of years, it was um, a um, an around the world trip to show how traditional navigation can still be used today. Um, but you're on a uh, the, uh, the sister canoe here, Hikiana Lea, and it's a pretty amazing experience to see how the boat was constructed and how it sails and some of the new technology that they're using today to allow these, um, these canoes to travel um, around the world. But these are three uh, great experiences. I'll kind of jump into one really quick if I can. I'll show you the Pearl Harbor experience. And the thing link is, is web-based, right? So they have a, a mobile app that allows you to create and view, but it also works great on a web browser on both. I don't know. For example, the United oh. States, December 8th, 9th. Sorry. My picture's not working. Let me try a different one. Cross my fingers. Let's see if it loads. There we go. So this is our this is the rooftop garden at my school. Okay. So these are 360 images, right? But you see, sort of overlaying the image are these tags that I can interact with and I can click on. So I can click on this one on this this tower tower um, uh, this this tower garden here that we have in the rooftop garden, and this will bring up a close-up shot of um, that, that tower garden. And I could, I didn't do it here, but I could even insert an audio recording as well. It could be students um, describing this. It could be background noise. Um, um, I could insert um, um, any kind of recording. And then this arrow is a transition tag that will move me down further into the garden. So I can create this, again, as a virtual walking tour experience. We were just over there. Now we're about 10 steps along the garden where our aquaponic systems are. And you see there's some video tags, so I could actually, so you can actually insert your own video files. Here's an up-close video. Oh, that's coming through you guys, okay. This is an up-close video of the aquaponic system, and then more picture tags. And then I can move further down the garden. So there's about six or seven of these um, 360 interactive images that are lined up. And it's a really 
easy tool to use. Um, there's literally three buttons in the tool to create. I, I've used these with students as young as third grade and fourth grade to create uh, virtual tours. Um, so it's, it's a really great entry level VR creation uh, tool for classrooms. Uh, that, that's one of my, my go-to VR creation tools. How am I doing on time, Peggy? I know I'm running out of time and I haven't gotten through most of my content. Yeah, we're getting close to the top of the hour, but I don't want you to stop, yeah. so keep going. If people need to leave, they can leave. We'll keep the recording going, and uh, those of us who can stay will stay. Thanks, Peggy. Okay, so the next one, um, another great creation tool is CoSpaces EDU. So this is a, a web-based 3D virtual creation tool, um, and basically it gives you this three, this flat 3D environment, and it's it's a drag and drop system where students can drag in three dimensional objects to build um, a, a 3D scenes, and also have like a built-in blockly coding tool where you can um, give your 3D objects some um, animations and dialogue and and voice and things like that. I've done a couple of these projects related to to English where they create they recreated scenes from To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, we did a project in grade five science where they, they recreated the solar system and um, used the research that uh, the information they learned from their research and inserted that into their, their scenes as well. So feel free to click on those and explore some of those CoSpaces projects. But CoSpaces is another, is another really great tool. Uh, I should have said this in the beginning, the disclaimer, these, these are paid tools, but they're relatively inexpensive when you sort of break down the individual student costs. Um, I think like ThingLink is like $35 a year for a class license. CoSpaces is like it's a couple dollars per student for um, um, an annual license. So it's uh, relatively inexpensive for these tools, but really amazing tools uh, to use in the classroom. We have kids creating VR content. And another one that just came out, I haven't even fully explored this myself, but I mean, if you're, if you're, um, if you've uh, seen this sort of floating around on Twitter and Facebook and on the social networks, Google just announced at their Google I.O. conference the, re the um, release of their own virtual reality creation tool called uh, Virtual, uh, called Tor Creator, which is a part of their Poly, their Google Poly website that allows you to create, uh, very similar to the way ThingLink works, um, these interactive 360 experiences where you have a 360 picture and you can overlay these interactive tags that uh, allow you to add um, a variety of different types of content, um, and then uh, and then be able to share those with um, uh, the world. Right? So uh, I, uh, there's a couple of really great examples that have already been created. Um, this is actually sort of connected to Google Expeditions. So on the the new Tor Creator website, you're going to see some of the Google Expeditions that you that you may have experience with in the Expeditions app. You're going to see some of that content um, in the new Tor Builder website as well, because eventually you'll be able to um, upload your Tor Builder creations into your Google Expeditions app so that you can give your students guided tours of uh, whatever the content you create, or have students create and give their own class a guided tour. So there will be a connection with, with Google App Expeditions later this year which is uh, pr pretty exciting, but I, I haven't even fully explored this new, new tool yet. But the, the main difference with this one is that Tor Builder will be completely free because it's a Google app. Um, so it'll be uh, completely free for classrooms to use. It's, it's already available for your Google Apps domain. If you're a Google Apps school, you and your students can start creating with Tor, uh, with Tor Builder now, which is uh, pretty amazing. We, we, we always love free, right? So check out some of those examples. Um, and then uh, so talking a little bit about Google Expeditions. Um, Expeditions is another one of my go-to. It's, it's a great entry-level VR experience. Um, and uh, um, I love Google Expeditions because, you know, for Expeditions, think of them as virtual field trips, and you don't, you don't need the hassles of, of, a re of a real field trip. You don't need the, the buses and the paperwork and investing all that time into coordinating a real field trips. And I'm not saying to stop taking your, your students on real field trips. Those are certainly valuable. But uh, for the places that you can't take them physically, 
we can take them there virtually. And there's over 800 plus uh, expeditions now in the Expeditions app. Lots of great um, content there. Um, so uh, of course, for real expeditions, you need student devices. If you want the most immersive experience, you need those VR headsets. And then if you want to take them on those the guided tour, you, the teacher needs a tablet in order to uh, control and manage the content that your students are seeing. So these are sort of like the basics of what is needed for this. And iPads work great, too. I, I work at a one-to-one -one iPad school, and we use our iPads um, a lot with, with Google Expeditions, uh, mainly because iPad screens are bigger, so kids can see more content on the screens that way. An expedition, it's a guided VR experience, although there is a what's called a solo mode, but uh, the guided experience allows the guide to manage what everyone else has seen. It, it keeps all this, all the, the entire group together. It's immersive 360, just like we experienced with the other apps. And uh, they've got content related to places all over the world, in space. You can do, there's even expeditions where you can take students inside the human body, which is kind of a pretty um, cool thing to think about. Um, but uh, expeditions, they come complete with facts and history. Um, they provide leveled guiding questions for students. And then there are these things called hotspots that allow you to focus in on certain areas of the, the 360 experience to bring um, attention to certain, certain aspects of it. Um, and there's, there's lots of, there's a, a great collection of Hawaii-based um, Google expeditions. And um, this link here on this slide will take you to some Google Apps infused expeditions. So if you're ever, if you're, ever, if you're struggling with, you know, how, how do I fit a VR experience or how do I fit an expedition into my curriculum, you know, what does that look like on a daily basis? Well, these uh, Google Apps infused expedition lessons um, provide uh, some really great examples of that where it's, it's an entire lesson broken down step by step using a variety of Google Apps like Slides and um, uh, YouTube even and Google Drawings and Google My Maps. And then, but it, it gives you um, a great sense of where an expedition can fit into that lesson and how it can supplement the learning and um, provide an opportunity for your students to expand on, on their research and um, uh, uh, the learning of of the, the unit or the topic. Um, so uh, feel free to check these, these uh, infused um, lesson plans are all free to access and download. And these have been, these have been tested and vetted in classrooms. So there's actually some student um, exemplars provided on the website as well. So you can see what that end product should look like from your students. Um, so some great student examples being shared there. So if you're ever wondering how um, an expedition can be used in a classroom most effectively. This is, there's some great examples here. And you could certainly, you know, take some of these ideas from these lessons um, where these are focused on Hawaii-based expeditions, but you could certainly use some of the same ideas with other units and um, lessons that, that, that you use in, in your classroom. Um, let's skip. And if you're... Uh, if you want to search for an, ex, uh, an expedition that would fit best with what's happening in your classroom, there's this link here on this slide. This is the official expedition spreadsheet. So this is managed by the Google Expeditions team. And whenever they add or create new expeditions, they update this spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet um, includes the name of the expedition, the themes, the description of the expedition, um, as well as any publicly accessible lesson plans that um, use that expedition. They'll have links to those, those lesson plans as well. So this is probably the number one resource for Google Expeditions. And it's, uh, you, know, you, you could do a keyword search in a spreadsheet and search for you know, an expedition based on a keyword that relates to your, your content or your curriculum to be able to find those things, to, to be able to find an expedition easily that you could use in your classroom. How are we doing on time, Peggy? Is it okay if I'm going over? I don't want to take up people's time too much. Yes, um, keep going. Because <laughs> okay. we have Q&A too. Okay, you, should we take some, some questions? Because I'm done with VR. Should, should we take going. some, some Q&A? Just keep going? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, I'm going to dabble into AR then. AR is a little shorter. I'm just going to demo three of my favorite AR apps just to give you a sense of how augmented reality works. Um, this first one, uh, this one's 
This one's pretty, I'm, I think I might blow your minds here with this one here. This one's called Spacecraft 3D. I actually just used this for third graders that will just finish up their solar system project and then they, they go from learning about the solar system and then they actually create their own space exploration vehicles and then they, they conduct research and they choose a place that they want to travel to in the universe and uh, decide what they're going to explore and what, you know, that, that sort of thing. And they actually build it out of recycled material. But to help them get a better sense of how space exploration vehicles work. This was a really great uh, um, augmented reality um, app that gave them some amazing ideas that they can incorporate into their designs. And this is an app created by um, NASA. And it's um, three-dimensional versions of their real spacecraft that, they sent, that they've sent into space. Um, so I'm going to switch back over to my, my phone here. Oh, shucks. I don't know if I have... Oh, I don't have the marker for it. Um, but here, so I'll, I'll just show you what the app looks like. For that, the, uh, so the way this works, I'll explain this, is um, you need to get... Uh, so when you get into this app, there's an option to select the spacecraft or to get a marker you see at the bottom. And um, you need to get the marker. And when you tap on it, you can have the marker emailed to you, or you can uh, download the marker. I'm going to email it to me. Maybe I can do this off my, my screen. I'm going to email this to myself really quick. OK, so because so, what happens is the, the app will use your camera, and you point your camera at the marker. And when it sees the marker, on a table, it, um, there it, is. it will um, turn that marker into a three-dimensional object. And in this case, it will turn it into spacecraft. And that spacecraft that you'll see will do some amazing things. So here, I'm going to go into select a spacecraft. I'm going to choose, um, so there's different collections here you see. So spacecraft for Mars, Earth, planetary, rocket launches, and then some other um, some other really amazing content. But here is the Mars content, the Mars spacecraft. And we'll, we'll do Curiosity. So here, it's using my camera. Uh, I'm trying to do this slowly. But when I point it at the marker, you see, oops, I don't want to do that, sorry. You see that marker turned into a three-dimensional version of the Mars work. Can you guys see that okay? Is it like getting all pixelated and blurry? But this is a three-dimensional version of the Mars rover. And I could, if I had this laying flat on a table, I hold it still. Can you see it? Oh, it seems to be blocked. Wait, let me take a, wait, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. There we go. I'm going to open up the screenshot. I got my finger in the way there. But can you guys see the... Can you guys see that screenshot there? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm pushing the limits of black <laughs> Yeah, we're still seeing a gray block over the top of it, so something must have changed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. let me try that. Now that's there you it. Sorry about that. There's the screenshot. Okay, so, so, it might, kind of so what I'm doing is I'm pointing the app, which is using my camera, at my computer screen, and my computer screen has the marker. You would typically print this marker out and lay it on a table, but when you point the apps, when you point the app at the marker, the um, the spacecraft will pop out of that that marker, and it's a it's three dimensional. So what that means is you could lay this on a table, which is what we did with third graders, and they could they could use your device and they could physically walk around the table to explore this 3D object. In this case, the spacecraft. And you could actually, there's some buttons on the bottom you see there. You could actually scale this up so you can make it, you can make it table size. You can make it the size of the table that you're using. Make it really big so the students can um, actually step forward and zoom in on the different details. And then it's, I think, I think I'm not going to be able to do it um, through Blackboard, but there's actually some animations where you could activate um, the camera on the, the Mars rover, and the camera will swing out of the 3D Mars rover, and it'll open up, 
And so students are able to see how that mechanism works and how the camera arm folds in on itself to, to, co to be collapsible and how it comes out and when, uh, you know, when it's active. So, so we, we use this in third grade to help the students, um, I think, have some really creative ideas for how they can um, incorporate different parts into their real uh, space exploration vehicle that they made out of recycled material. So they explored some of the real spacecraft that has been used by NASA over the years to get some ideas, and then they incorporated some of those ideas into their real designs and sketches before they went on to the, the um, actual uh, building phase of this project. But uh, so um, spacecraft is amazing. It's got, um, you know, the uh, space, spacecraft from Mars, um, all the rockets that they've launched into space over the years, and lots of different um, spacecraft that they've used. It's, pretty, it's, it's one, of my, one of my favorites kind of blows my mind they were able to do this, and then the students just really enjoyed being able to explore these things. So Spacecraft 3D is a, is a pretty amazing augmented reality. But you see where, um, where virtual reality, as I explained earlier, transports you somewhere else, takes you away from the real world. Augmented reality keeps you in the real world by using your camera, so you can still see what's physically around you, so you're not bumping into people. But it augments it by placing three-dimensional objects through your camera into the real space. So it makes it seem like that Mars rover was really there in, um, in front of you and you're able to explore it in uh, uh, three dimensions. Um, the next one for all you math teachers out there, GeoGebra um, is, a, is a great AR experience. Um, so this, this one, uh, um, I, might, I might be pushing the limits of Blackboard again, but in these, in these slide decks, um, if you have access to it, I've attached some demo videos for each of these apps. You can get a better idea of how this app works. Um, but GeoGebra, again, uses your camera, so you can see what's in front of you. But as you see in this example here, there are three-dimensional shapes laid out in this wide array in front of you through your device. And um, it, it, in this particular example, it's challenging you to find certain kinds of shapes and then you use the camera button on the right side of the screen to snap a picture of that shape. So, for example, um, it might ask you um, to take a picture of all the pyramids. And so what you have to do is you, have, you can you physically walk through this large array of shapes that's laid out in front of you in the room, and you want to get up close to each of the examples of a pyramid, and you snap a picture. And that picture is saved <clears throat> into your camera roll, and now your students have an archive of the pyramids. And then they could, of course, they can move those pictures into a slide deck, create a presentation, um, and then share information that they know about pyramids. And they may also say, like, you know, um, take a picture of all of the cubes, or take a picture of all of the cylinders. Um, so this is just one example of how Ge uh, GeoGebra works. Uh, the most recent update to GeoGebra is it allows you to uh, display um, a three-dimensional graph of a math problem out in front of you in the room. It'll create this large three-dimensional graph. Um, I haven't I haven't tested it out yet, but I saw it recently in a, in a demo video, uh, and maybe in this one too. But um, this is a really great way to augment your math lessons to bring to bring you know almost physical, tangible um, math to your classroom, and it gets the students up out of their seats interacting and moving around and working together. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it just creates a really cool experience and um, allows you to uh, expand on, you know, the ways that we, our students, can learn math in our classrooms. Yeah, yeah, G um, GeoGebra, I mean, they have lots of, they have apps for the, the web, the computer, mobile apps, and GeoGebra AR is one of their many uh, resources, but this is um, specifically augmenting augmented reality in the math math classroom. And uh, the last one I want to show you is uh, by the uh, WWF. Um, they created this one. It's called Free Rivers. It was actually demoed in I think the um, a recent Apple keynote for educators. Um, and what this one does is there's a demo video here, but um, you point your device, your camera, at a table, you know, just like a spacecraft, and it lays out this massive landscape in, in augmented reality on the table. And then you can physically walk around that landscape and 
stepping forward into the landscape and bringing your device down into the mountain range or down into the river or the stream or the pack of animals um, allows you to interact with that content and learn more um, about this particular landscape and how everything works together. Um, uh, it's, uh, this is another really great example of how augmented reality can be used in your, if you're, you know, the classrooms are learning about land formations and things like that, this is one of those, those apps that um, can uh, definitely supplement all the other great um, content and curriculum that you use um, in the classroom. And this, this app is only, this app is not available for Android, unfortunately, but it is, it works on the newest iPads. Um, they also, uh, they, you can check it out further on, on the website. Um, they have some great, some great demo videos and some explanations and um, some, some ideas on how this can be used with uh, teachers and students. Um, I, I wish I could demo these for you, but I think I'm certainly, I would certainly be pushing the limits <laughs> of Blackboard here. Um, uh, so I'm actually getting to the end here. But uh, if you're interested in learning more, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I am just barely scratching the surface for you here just giving you a really small taste of what's possible in AR and VR in the classroom. Um, but if you're interested in exploring more and seeing what other apps are out there, um, I've got um, a really great AR and VR teacher resource hub um, that I'm, I'm putting to, I'm actually, the, I have it on my own personal website, um, but uh, I'm actually transitioning and moving it over to another page um, I should be ha I should have it up and running by the end of June because I'm getting ready for a big conference coming up. Um, but uh, it's growing in development, but it'll be packed with resources. There's actually some some of the pages are already up and running. Um, like uh, I have a 360 degree camera uh, uh, database that you can check out. Cameras that are under $500. Um, I'm just piecing together um, a, a a VR and AR app database for educators. And the purpose of this is that um, what I'm really doing, I'm sort of doing the heavy lifting for you where I'm vetting and exploring and using these apps with students and testing them out so that they are classroom tested, right? Um, that, that's sort of been the, the, um, the bane, you know, the, the, the issue with, with um, all this content. It's the Wild West and it's, it's really hard for teachers to find the time to vet this themselves and I've sort of taken it upon myself to do that. So this website will, will be that for you. Um, it won't just be any and all kind of content, but it'll be stuff that I've actually used and tested myself um, in the classroom. And um, there's also a blog in there, and you, um, I'm putting together a AR and VR newsletter for a free newsletter for, for teachers and uh, for educators as well. So feel free to check that out. She just tossed the link in the chat there, but it's also in the slide deck. And uh, with that, I'm sorry I went over time. Hopefully uh, I'm not taking too much of everyone's Saturdays away from them. But um, can I hand it back over to you, Peggy, for Q&A? you have time for that? I'll ask the questions, Michael. I captured them as we went along. OK. One of the first questions before you showed the virtual 360 is there a difference between virtual reality and 360 images? Um, they're really um, considered the same, I think. Um, 360, I mean, at least I do. 360 is virtual reality. Um, the, only, the only difference, as I heard earlier, is there's the 3D version of it where you're in a headset, mm -hmm. which is the, mm -hmm. the most immersive VR experience. And then there's the 2D version of it where you're holding the phone further out in front of you and you can still see the, the world around you. And, that, and that, that's a, a less immersive VR experience, but they're both still considered virtual reality. Okay. How did you connect your phone to the screen sharing? <laughs> Everybody always asks that question. <laughs> so I'm using, I'll show you here, I'm using the QuickTime player on my MacBook. So it's, it's free. It, comes by default on any new mm -hmm. iMac or um, MacBook. Wait, what am I sharing? Let me make sure I'm, oh yeah, I'm sharing QuickTime. Okay, so I'm using QuickTime, and I'm, uh, all I do is I have my phone plugged into my USB port with the lightning cable that your mm -hmm. iPad or your iPhone comes with, 
And when you have it plugged in, um, your computer and your phone will connect, and there may be a pop-up on the, the phone screen to trust your computer. That's my, my kid there, my kid. But uh, what you do is you go to, let me close this down. In QuickTime, once you have it open, you go to File, and you do a new movie recording. And what that typically does is it'll open up the recording screen, there you go. and it'll, it'll, by default, it'll use the camera on your, your computer. But if you have your mobile device plugged in, your iPad or your iPhone, you click on this drop down, and it'll recognize that your, your device has a camera, and you can switch it to uh, your, in this case, my phone. And it'll, instead of using the camera, it'll actually um, show my uh, screen instead. And that's how I'm able to show you my screen. So I'm just viewing my device screen on my computer mm -hmm. in real time. So, so this is what I use for, uh, like, when I'm doing presentations at conferences and workshops. Um, I, I, uh, some of you were mentioning, like, Reflector earlier. Mm -hmm. There's some great, like, wireless um, options for this, but um, sometimes that's not too reliable when you're fighting for Wi-Fi. Right. Um, so by having it physically plugged into the device, you don't have to deal with those network issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm using QuickTime. It's free. It's, it's, uh, it's installed by default on your Apple laptops or your iMacs, and uh, mm -hmm. it's great for this. Okay. Uh, does Discovery VR work on Chromebooks? Uh, yeah, you know, it actually um, it does, because Discovery is a little tricky. Um, Discovery VR actually has all... I think all of its VR content um, on their on a website. I think it's discoveryvr.com, mm -hmm. and they also have it available through a YouTube channel as well, which is also useful. And I know some uh, lots of schools still block YouTube, but um, you know typically teachers have access to it, so you could display it on the screen, or maybe as a, the, the teacher could could load it up on the on the a laptop for them and they could watch it. But it is, I think they have it on a website and they also have it on YouTube as well. Okay. I think this goes back to sharing the phone. You have to have an Apple laptop or computer, not a Windows computer? Mm -hmm. now, I'm, I'm not a Windows guy, so I've never used QuickTime. So I, think, I think you can install QuickTime on Windows, but I've never yeah, you tried can. that. Yeah, you can install QuickTime on Windows. Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't have an answer for that one. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm That's an Apple right. fanboy, so I only have mm -hmm. only have Apple products. <laughs> uh, okay. Somebody did share a link for the the um, goggles. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Yeah, the, the merge headsets. the merge VR. They're they're they got a sale going on those merge VR headsets right now. Um, definitely, if you're interested in those headsets. Join the Merge Educator Facebook group because the uh, the Merge company they're super active in the education space and they were offering a great deal on those goggles for like uh, I can't remember it was like twelve ninety nine or fifteen ninety nine, which is mm -hmm. a huge markdown from what they they normally cost and they're they're probably some of the, in in my opinion it's the best VR headset for classrooms because it's made of that really awesome foam material, sixteen ninety nine. Thank you. And do you have one of those headsets for each student? Um, yes, yeah. So we have a class set. Okay. Yeah. So I have, I have like a, I actually have a, um, what's called a, a Best Buy sells what's called a Google Expeditions kit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but it's basically a, it's like an all, uh, it contains everything you need. So it's, mm. um, it's just like heavy rolling Pelican case contains all of the, the, the mobile phone devices, the headsets, a teacher tablet, um, a wireless router, and then it all comes um, pre-set up for you in the case. And, you know, when you take it, when it gets delivered to your, your school, it's uh, ready to go right out of the box. It's pretty amazing. So somebody asked about alternatives for VR other than the headsets, and that would be the web-based apps? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. 
I wonder if you can combine the webcam with VR, and I guess that was the ThingLink VR. Uh, well, so the way, so not the webcam. So ThingLink, you have to get to um, get to have a get to either create or find a 360 picture to uh -huh, okay. start the creation process. So mm -hmm. you you upload that 360 image into the ThingLink VR editor, and then from there you, you can build your your tags. So it's the camera, not the webcam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I was just I was kind of signing up the chat here, and Caroline, this great suggestion. Um, if you have like a, a shared VR kit with headsets, you definitely want to have alcohol wipes. So I always, yeah. after every use, I I have a box of alcohol wipes, and I wipe everything down. And um, oh sure, you know, Zach, yeah, you can imagine kids having their faces in these things yeah. and sharing it. <laughs> That's definitely a, a great tip. Can Google students, Gary, yeah, can Google students, can students do Google Expeditions <laughs> on an iPad and hold it up instead of using a headset? Yes, yes, yes. So that, that's, that's what we do mostly because I, I'm, a, I'm mm -hmm. at an iPad school. So we have mm -hmm. Expeditions installed on all of the student iPads. And um, it actually makes for a better experience in mo most cases because the iPad screen is bigger than a phone screen. So they, there's more screen real estate for them to see the details, and then yeah, they would just they would just view an expedition in 2D mode, where the screen is not split like it is in 3D mm -hmm. mode, and they would just hold the iPad out in front of them, and then um, we have we have at our school chairs like um, a rolly spinning chairs, which work great for for VR experiences because they can they can be seated, which is safer. But they could spin themselves around in 360 degrees in order to, to interact with those VR mm -hmm. experiences. Okay. Will you be an? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I, I just wanted to add. Um, it's, it's certainly uh, like iPads, even with even with phones too. Um, it's possible with uh, much younger kids, you know, down to, to pre K and K. Mm -hmm. um, but you only want them to use 2D mode. Um, there's a recommendation, especially in expeditions, to not use 3D mode with kids seven years or younger because their eyes are, st are still developing and there's not a lot of research to suggest one way or the other whether that's safe or not, but we always mm -hmm. um, um, err on the side of caution sure. in these cases. So, uh, so uh, 2D mode um, is still very useful for the much younger kids because they would just mm -hmm. hold the device on front of them. Mm -hmm. um, I unfortunately will not be at ISTE this year, and I'm super bun bummed about that because they just made the keynote announcements, and I, mm -hmm. there's somebody that I really want to see keynote, but I'm unfortunately not going to be there this year. Okay. Those were the questions that I was able to capture. I think it's probably about time to to wrap yeah, up. Uh, awesome. <laughs> again, Great thanks question, so anyway. much. Thanks so much for presenting for us today. I think people learned an awful lot about both VR and AR. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Michael. That was so worth it. I'm so glad you kept going. Um, we do have some great shows coming up, and I'm going to blitz right through these because I know we need to get moving. But next week, we're going to have Brandy Ramirez, and she's going to be do, doing some great um, app sharing with balanced literacy and technology. Um, and it isn't all apps. Some of it's done on the computer, but it's all free. Uh, then we won't have a show on Memorial Day weekend. And on June 9th, Kim Strobel is going to do a, a really cool session on the science of happiness and its impact on school culture. She was one of the presenters in um, Ditch That Textbook Summit, and we fell in love with her. So we asked her if she would come and share it with us. And then June 16th will be our last webinar before summer break, and we're going to do our open mic summer PD plans, and our summer bucket list. So I hope you'll put all those dates on the schedule and plan to join us. And I do want to remind you that 
next weekend, the free 4T virtual conference is taking place. So it's May 19th to the 21st. The link is in the live binder. All you have to do is register. Totally free, and you'll get all access to all of the links and the recordings. So be sure to check that out. And we will have our show next Saturday. But then you can pop into those sessions afterwards, and they're always just terrific. So check that out. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources at one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it is free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site or from within the live binder. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month. The video collections on iTunes U as well as YouTube. As you exit the session, the survey should open up. And at the bottom of that, you can request a professional development certificate. You can also request one from inside the live binder. It prints out with your name, thanks to Patty Ruffing, as well as she sends them out. Make sure, though, that you use a personal email address for this. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. And here's how to get to the survey from the direct link, the chat, or within the live binder. And as you exit the session, the survey should open up automatically. Special thanks again to our special guest, Michael Fratano II, to Steve Harvadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.